Now I like to organize my remarks along the lines of holy grail in central banking. Basically in central banking there are three separation problems. The first separation problem is price stability or macroeconomic stability and financial stability that the governor uh, eloquently explained. And then there are two more um, uh, uh, separation problem. The second one is the uh, um, aggregate demand management and liquidity management policies of central banks. And the third one is, uh, is, is very important for emerging market economies is the fact that how to separate local currency liquidity management from foreign currency liquidity management. So along this line, what the Central Bank of Turkey has done recently, I'd like to say something about. Um, well, central banks evolved quite drastically. If you look at the Fed's uh, 1923 principles, you think that they, they changed a lot. Uh, let me tell you what they were principle in 1923. Uh, the first principle is basically says that the, dis the discouraging of speculative lending by commercial banks. The second one is the desire to meet the credit of business. And the third one is the preference of a focus on credit over a focus on monetary aggregates. In other words, the Fed in 1923 had two objectives. One objective is the composition of credit and the second objective is leverage level rather than monetary aggregate, or rather than price stability or rather than something else. Uh, it seems that you know we revised, uh, we, we came to this point, uh, we recognize that uh, leverage level is important and the composition of credit is important whether uh, uh, credits directed to uh, productive uh, businesses or speculative businesses. Um, I mean, recently we have also done something along this line. We have taken macroprudential measures to change the composition of uh, bank loans um, uh, from consumption to uh, business loans. So that's why I like to bring this uh, out. And secondly, more importantly, in, in Turkey, what we also highlighted the fact that leverage level is very important. Uh, um, as much as price stability, of course. Um, so we have an intermediate target um, in terms of uh, bank loan growth rate. We think that 15% is, is sustainable for t Turkey. So, uh, you know, without knowing the 1923 Fed uh, principles, we came to the same conclusion. Um, now, this is the first. Uh, maybe I should say something more about how to separate um, uh, macroeconomic stability from financial stability. Um, probably it's not alone to, to use uh, regulation um, uh, uh, to achieve financial stability, you need to do more. Uh, it's not simply a micro regulation, you need to also to, um, use macro prudential measures in a very uh, counter-cyclical way. Otherwise, regulation measures really um, uh, uh, not uh, counter-cyclical. Counter um, well, in Turkey, we have introduced uh, several regulatory measures and macro-prudential measures. Uh, we have some interesting one. I will um, explain them later on. The, the, the second uh, separation problem is quite important for uh, for especially emerging market economies, have to separate um, aggregate demand, man demand management from liquid management. Well, time to time it becomes quite important, especially during uh, excessive global liquidity or excessive capital flows and volatile capital flows. Um, so, so, so what we have done in, uh, uh, in this area, we we have used uh, interest rate corridor policy. Um, again, if you look at uh, some other central banks, you will notice that they have also used uh, this sort of policies. Um, again, I, I have to admit that 
uh, we were not aware of other central banks using uh, wide interest rate corridor policy uh, to you know, deal with the adverse impact of capital flows. Uh, it's quite useful, you know, uh, especially during uh, excessive capital inflow of times, if you have a really very low um, borrowing rate um, for, for, for banks, uh, so you will be able to uh, discourage short-term capital in inflows. This policy has been used by Central Bank of Norway and the, and the Central Bank of Romania for many years. So that was quite important uh, for us. And at the same time, uh, reserve requirement ratios have been used extensively by um, EM central banks. We have also used um, reserve requirement ratios. But we also use in a really uh, different way than other central banks. Um, we related reserve requirement ratios to, to, to leverage, to reserve accumulation, and even uh, to core liabilities. So um, we, we try to achieve perhaps too many things, but it is really achievable uh, as long as you design a, a clever um, uh, uh, reserve requirement ratios. Um, so the, the next one is, is, is important for EM countries, separation of local currency liquidity management from foreign currency liquidity management. Again, um, our idea was to use reserve requirement ratios uh, to separate those two liquidity managements. So we have reserve requirement ratios on Turkish deposits. Um, we introduce a facility to, to, uh, to the financial system so that uh, they can pay their liabilities in foreign currency and gold as well as Turkish lira. So it, uh, that enabled us separate foreign currency liquidity management from local currency liquidity management. So it was a very um, you know, a clever way of um, separating those two liquidities. Um, maybe I should m move back to um, reserve requirement ratios, um, especially the core liability um, the liabilities. It's very important. I mean, if you uh, face excessive capital inflows, um, um, what happens? Your banking sector start uh, 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 accumulating non-core liabilities rather than core liabilities to finance excessive credit growth. So you need to find a way of discouraging non-core liability accumulation but core uh, liability accumulation uh, and encouraging core liabilities. So uh, recently we, introdu uh, we introduced the, uh, a mechanism in which we are going to pay interest on reserves, but that is going to be related to um, uh, the capacity of banking sector to improve their core liabilities and reduce their uh, non-core liabilities. Uh, th this is quite useful. Um, you know, we are entering into a, into an episode uh, there will be less global liquidity. So encouraging core liabilities, but discouraging non-core liabilities is going to be quite a um, uh, um, good idea. But at the same time, I have to um, you know um, uh, say that. Uh, the facility we are providing to the, uh, to the Turkish banks um, not really is going to uh, uh, drastically change their choice between core liabilities and non-core liabilities. But at the same time, it provides a very strong signal that country is going to do something along these lines. Um, for example, Central Bank of Korea introduced a regulation on, on this uh, non-core core liabilities and uh, they aimed um, correcting this core non-core liabilities uh, over four years but within just one year they managed to correct the, uh, the ratio um, between uh, core and non-core liabilities because of the strong signaling you, you get um, from the regulation and we are hoping that 
this will provide us a strong uh, signal to the Turkish banks. Um, so I mean, uh, you know, I, I don't want to go on that we have also introduced many macroprudential measures, loan to value ratios, sort of things. Um, but basically, uh, I think along the lines of separation, local currency liquidity and foreign currency liquidity, and also uh, separating um, aggregate demand management from overall liquidity management. And we have done something quite unique stuff. Um, so with that, I, I, I like to stop here and then uh, wait for your questions in the question uh, session.